Hungary won Scotland nil and Hungary have a great, great chance of making the round of 16 after beating the Scots in Stuttgart. Before we continue, guys, the revolution shall be televised to all my Kenyan people. Tomorrow is a big day. Um, yeah, I didn't manage to watch this entire game. Uh, we had F1 yesterday. We had a live watch party for F1. Shout out to everyone that came out. But I woke up today morning and I've watched the entire game. I've watched this game and I've watched the Germany game. And yeah, like a few things that I've noted. Um, first of all, um, the Vaga injury that was that was that was pretty messed up. Um, so apparently he's broken a number of bones in his face, so he has to go for surgery. Um, and that's what made the time like the added time was crazy. Like plus whatever it was. Um, the winning goal comes in the 90th plus 10 minutes. It just shows you how much time was added on. Um, the super sub was so bot. So bot of the super sub. Oh, they're calling him so bot. So bot. So he came off the bench, um, scored the winner. He had a great chance in the 90th minute to actually get a goal. And he just ended up hitting the post from the right side. And this was like in the, because he came on the 86. This was in the 80, in the 90th minute, actually. So yeah, he came on. He really changed the game. He definitely a hero for Hungary. Shaloy, Shaloy, guys, Shaloy. I'm telling you, Shaloy is the man to watch in this tournament. He played in the second game of the tournament and ever since then made a big impression on me. He's one of two players I keep, no, three players that I've just been banging on about this entire tournament. So him for Hungary, Ebisha for Switzerland, and um, Korochashvili, Kochorashvili, Kochorashvili from Georgia. Those three players for me have just proven that like, like they're hungry they're hungry and if any of them gets a big money move i will not be surprised at all and it's a bargain at the end of the day um yeah uh in the 98 minute scotland actually had a chance to score gulashi um had saved a shot from handley who had a free shot in the mid in the box which was one of very few and rare because these two teams coming into the coming into this game were bottom three in attacks and in shots at goal so I was always expecting a KG affair. Um, I think I predicted a 2-1 scoreline or something like that, but I predicted a close scoreline. And yeah, that's how it proved out to be. Um, again, Shaloy, his chance creation, him running in behind, like he was the only one running in behind. Um, his ball carries are always breaking the line. As a coach, that is what you want from your player. Like you want someone who keeps breaking the line. And I feel like this applies to every single sport. Guys, this is box to box. We will reference every sport into every sport. So yeah, um, in basketball, if you have a good point guard who can dribble well and penetrate the first line of defense, it's the best thing for a coach. A coach wants a player like that in their team. Like it gives them versatility. In rugby, if you have someone who can break the line, it means the defense is always running back and scrambling. So again, sports is about manipulating space. If I can break the line and make you guys, and I get to space where you guys are not, it means you have to rush there. And when you rush there, it means your defense is out of sorts. Um, for Scotland, I I still believe the best the best way to play this game was always okay. The good thing is that they came into this game with passion, like that that was their physicality also there. Those are the two the two things that are bare minimum for Scotland side to do well that we've seen so far. Um, but they're not crossing the ball in. I feel like the first proper cross came in the twentieth minute. John McGinn, but it wasn't even a really good cross. It was just a cross, but it was in a dangerous area, and you could see like. That actually caused problems, but they didn't do too much of it. His free kicks, uh, Robo's free kicks as well, were the first few were not the best, were a bit disappointing. Um, they need him to be like proper, proper. He needs to be one of their best defenders and definitely their best attacker from wide. So he's the captain that he knows that. He knows that he has to be great every single game. Um, he also knows that he can't be great every single game, but he will always fight for his team. That's the one thing I'll always give Robo. Um, so Bosley had was also on free kicks on the other side. The two Liverpool players were the set piece takers. And then for Hungary, the first one just went over. I think at some point, the Scottish just expected all his free kicks to go at goal. So when he finally added some variation to it in the 40th minute, just clipped it in like it was a chip. Orban was in the back post and his header went off the post. That was the proper first proper chance in this game. And yeah, he was like, you need to do more of that. They're not doing more of that. But that was also, he looked like he was offside. So had it been a goal, it would have gone to VR. Uh, the assistant referee didn't put his flag up. So he just ended up being a goal kick. Um, yeah. So I, I just feel like Scotland, 
they play to their strengths on in certain times and not all times. The last 10 minutes of the game, people were going at it. They were like, okay, now we actually need a result. Scotland were in a very unique position because it was nil-nil and they knew if they score a goal, they have their like they're more or less secured because they'd have four points, right? Um, they also came into this game knowing that Switzerland, if Switzerland were hit heavy by Germany, they also had a chance to finish second in the group. So there was that as well. Um, but these games were happening concurrently. And at that point, I think they already knew that Germany were losing at that point. They were losing 1-0. Um, yeah. And then um, the only big shot for Scotland was the 78th minute. The penalty shot on Stuart Armstrong, uh, Willie Auburn again, Tangles with him in the D as he's running on on goal. The ref doesn't even give a penalty. It looked very close. It looked very, very close. And I think they really got away with that one on, on that occasion. But all in all, Hungary managed to get the 1-0 win. They dedicated this win to uh, Varga, who, again, injured. I think he just had surgery. And, yeah, all the best to him. Now, Hungary wait and see if they are one of the four best place teams in... Um, in the tournament because because as we say there's six groups and the four best number threes qualify for the round of 16 so i can i'm just waiting to pull that up then i can tell you guys what is happening so so far the best third place teams are 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 austria the four best third place teams are austria slovakia hungary and slovenia but austria and slovakia on three points slovenia on two points albania on one czechia on one um, Hungary is the only team there that has played three games. Obviously, only Group A has, has Group A has played the last game, so they will be. They've given them some. They've given themselves a some hope, but they're not in the best position. Also, their goal difference is the worst here. They have minus three, so yeah, it's looking unlikely. But it's football. You never know. That is it for Group A and Scotland. Go home. Hungary wait for their fate in the next few games.